Ladies and gentlemen, coming to a kitchen near you, the sexy, the vivacious, the talented, the beautiful, the chocolate cooking queen. It's the cooking queen, the cooking queen right here. It's the cooking queen, the cooking queen right here. It's the cooking queen, the cooking queen right here. It's the cooking queen. Hey guys, welcome to She Loves to Cook, and I am your host, the one and only, the cooking queen. And today we are going to be making some pork chops. Are we going to fry them? Are we going to bake them? Are we going to steam them? Are we going to broil them? What are we going to do to our pork chops? Well, come on into my kitchen and I'll show you what I'm going to do to my pork chops. The first thing I do is I have some warm water here in the sink. And I have some sea salt. doesn't really matter what kind of sea salt. If you don't have sea salt, then use regular salt. Keep it simple. I'm going to put about two tablespoons of salt into the water. The water should be about an inch high, just enough to cover the pork chops. Now these bad boys are frozen just a bit and I don't want to break them apart because I don't want to tear them. Can you get in here? So what I'm doing is soaking them inside the salt solution. And we're going to soak them for about 20 to 30 minutes to make sure that they are clean and to make sure that they are unthawed properly. All right, so our pork chops have been sitting in here a while, and as you can look at the water and tell that the blood has been drained out of each and every piece just by adding salt in the water. So you won't get much blood when you cook it. What I'm gonna do is let this bloody water out. And while I'm letting it out, hot water, and I'm taking each, each piece of pork, and I'm going to rinse it off. Now that I've rinsed them off and put them into my casserole dish or a big bowl or whatever, I am going to season them. Don't forget to log into the website and get your seasoning. This is my Spice It Up seasoning. So what I'll do is get two tablespoons of Spice It Up seasoning. And I'm going to mix it up. Got the seasoning over every piece. Now I'm just going to add just a sprinkle more of the top part of the bag, the top part of the bag, which has like the onions and stuff like that. I'm going to let it sit for a little while. If you only can let it sit for a few minutes, let it sit for a few minutes. If you can let it sit longer, it's all good. So however long you can let it sit, let it sit so it can marinate and then go ahead and bake it, go ahead and fry it, go ahead and broil it. But uh, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it when we come back. Alright, so what I've done is selected my pan that I want to use. I like to use the biggest um, skillet that I have, and it's pretty big. It can fit four to five pork pieces in here, maybe even six. I have it filled with about um, three quarters of an inch with water. I don't need my food drowning in grease. I'm not deep frying, so light oil. Three quarters of um, oil in here. Three quarters of my pan high. And we're going to fry these babies up. I have my temperature right here on about six, as you can see. And yeah, that's what I got. Okay, so in my flour bucket, if you want to know how I, how I make my flour bucket, tune in to the flour bucket video. And in that video, I'll show you how I make my seasoned flour bucket. Throw some pork in here. And now I can take the top and shake it, or I can just flip it from side to side, put in my flour mixture on my pork. And that is how we do that. The next step, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and fry up the pork chops. So I take the pieces, make sure the grease is ready by as soon as it hits. I want it to start frying automatically. I don't want to have to wait. 
I increased my temperature to about 7 because these pork chops are going to neutralize the temperature in the pan and I really don't want that to affect the fry. I want it to stay at that same temperature. Alright, so now I'm just laying my pork pieces. It'll get smaller, I guess, and then you can add more. I like to do it like a puzzle. It's been four minutes, and so now it's time to go ahead and put these babies. You can see I have more room in my pan to add more. So I'll do that. Okay, so it's been about five minutes, and I did uh, wind up putting this up to the pan. Go ahead and flip it and flip it all. Got that nice golden brown on one side. Because I like split, but I don't want dry. So I get that nice golden brown on one side and leave the other side yellow brown. Which means the yellow side is already done. Which means the pork chops are done. Next thing to use to force the pork top is the fork. I'm telling you the truth. Alright, so I have my glass casserole dish back here. I'm going to line it with some paper towels, some right here is left because it's the last piece that I put in. Go ahead and put our uh, fire back down to about six. Y'all come over here and check my chicken out. I mean, my um, pork pieces out. Let me bring them a little closer to Mm. Mm. 
sources. Simply the best. Better than all the rest. Better than anyone. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, we're simply the best. Thank y'all for tuning in to my pork chop tutorial. Check out the website. Don't forget to thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And get your spicy up seasoning. Peace and love.